What's up, everybody? We are back from our long hiatus. We're going to talk about how to pick the perfect pet reptile for you. What you should be looking for if you're an expert, if you're a beginner. And we'll give you some suggestions. Hope you guys enjoy the video. It's been a while, guys. We're kind of rusty. <laughs> So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to pick your perfect first pet reptile. There's a lot of questions you should ask yourself before you know diving into an animal. Um, you know, price is very important, especially if you're getting a first-time pet. You're not gonna want to, maybe not gonna want to spend a thousand dollars on some high-end rare animal. So you got to figure out a budget, not just a budget for the animal, but a budget for the enclosure as well. That's all gonna be together. Um, another question we need to ask ourselves is what do I want? What do we want when we're picking a pet? Do I want something that I'm gonna be able to handle all the time? Do I want something that looks incredible like is just incredibly visually stunning? Um, do I want something you know that I can leave alone, but I can set up in a crazy bioactive enclosure? Do I want something more rare something more uncommon something that people don't really have? So these are a couple questions you got to ask yourself yeah and like everything else there's different levels there's beginner reptiles there's intermediate there's advanced and especially let's say if you want to breed the animals because a lot of people that get reptiles eventually they want to breed they start off with one gecko then they get a pair then they want to breed those geckos so you got to keep that in the back of your mind because you might want to do that in the future um, but something that's very important to keep in mind also is how you know, if you have a busy schedule, if you, uh, you know, if you leave for work a lot, like if you go out of, if you're in vacation a lot or something, how is that, where are you gonna keep that reptile? Or is that a reptile that could be alone for two or three or four days without any maintenance required? That, those are things that you wanna look into before you actually get your first pet reptile, or maybe even if you already have, uh, you know, dozens of reptiles and you're looking to add another one, that's something that you gotta keep in mind. One of the biggest factors when it comes to any animal that you're gonna purchase is gonna be the price. Price comes down to the supply and demand of an animal. Let's pick, for example, crested geckos. The demand is very high, but the, the, the supply is also very high. So it's gonna be more of a, you know, more of an average price. It's not gonna be too expensive, of course. They are gonna be like crested geckos or in that same species of reptiles that are gonna be, you know, separated from the rest with their patterns and colors and those are always gonna be more. But for the most part, the base or like the normal or wild type animal, it's gonna be very affordable. Like a crested gecko, a leopard gecko, a ball python, all those are beginner animals and they're gonna be lower cost. Now, when you go, for example, instead of a crested gecko, you want a giant gecko, a lychee. Doesn't matter really how nice the gecko is, it's always gonna be at a certain price because of the, the supply versus the demand, right? There's a lot, de a lot of demand for lychees, but the supply can't keep up with the demand because they are a little bit harder to reproduce. They don't produce like, as many babies as crested geckos. So these are things that are, gonna, that are gonna dictate the price. So when you're looking for your reptile pet, you wanna make sure you know, okay, you know, I'm not gonna start looking at armadillo lizards if I'm looking to spend 80 bucks on an animal because an armadillo lizard is gonna cost you a lot more than that. So before you start getting ideas or, or setting yourself, setting your hopes up too high, make sure you look at the prices, kind of gauge where the market's at, and sometimes animals will be a little bit cheaper, um, but that doesn't mean that, you know, it's a bad animal. For example, like a fire skink. Fire skinks are very cheap, but they're absolutely gorgeous with their coloration. Personally, I'm not somebody that goes too much of a price. I just go by if the animal is, you know, it's hardy, it does good in captivity, and if it's something that I visually like. Yeah, and a second part to that budget is the enclosure. You also got to keep that in mind. You don't want to blow your whole budget on just the animal and then you have nowhere to keep it or the accessories that it needs. Um, so you do got to keep in mind when looking for animals how much is the whole setup going to cost as a baby all the way to an adult. Like for a crested gecko, we can set up a baby like in a shoebox up, but it is going to need a, a bigger enclosure eventually and that is going to cost you some money. Now, there might be some animals that are cheaper like bearded dragons. You can find cheap bearded dragons, but 
the light the light bulbs are gonna cost some money the fixture to hold them is gonna cost some money food. the food the enclosure bearded dragons get a good size so you do need a good size enclosure for them they eat a lot of food like David mentioned so that's also gonna cost you a lot of money so it's like so you got to keep all those variables in mind so when it comes to like the let's say like the beginner the lowest level the cheaper animals that make good pets for a beginner let's say with lizards I would start off with maybe crested geckos leopard geckos bearded dragons what's a good another good one blue uh, tongues are great blue tongue too skinks. they're just gonna be a little bit on the pricier side yeah. compared to those other animals you just mentioned but in the long run they're they're very very affordable yeah so crested geckos and leopard geckos and bearded dragons for example they're gonna start off anywhere from the $30 range up to like you know $80 for like more average looking animals which still make just as good pets as like pets I should say as a like you know $300 crested geckos just as good as a pet as a $10 crested gecko if you can find one that price but um, so that's like the beginner stage let's say if you want to go another level up you would include like the blue tongues in there um, some other lizards that you could possibly put in there maybe chameleons like panther chameleons which are going to be a little bit pricier and also they're going to be a little bit harder to take care of they're not necessarily hard to take care of but they're going to be a little more delicate and that brings us on to the next subject longevity now when you're looking for a pet do you want something that's going to live five ten years or do you want something that's going to be around a long time like 20 30 years plus you know i know some people don't like don't like have or not don't like but you know might struggle with keeping an animal for 20 years of its life so they're looking for a shorter lived animal while other people want a forever pet that's going to last 20 30 years you know some of those longer lived pets are going to be like blue tongue skinks that can live 20 plus years while some of the shorter lived ones are going to live like seven ten years kind of like crested panther chameleons around five so that's another thing to keep in mind can i take care of this thing for five years or do i want something that's going to live for 20 30 plus years yeah, I mean like, well like the Crestage will go for like 15 years, but let's say you want like a freaking Aldabra tortoise or something, that thing's probably going to outlive you. So it just depends on what, the good thing about this though is that with reptiles, um, let's say you don't really, you can't keep it anymore or you move or something and you can't, you know, you're not going to be able to manage it. You could always, there's always people out there that are looking for the animal. It's not as hard to give away a reptile, I would think, than like a dog or a cat, because it's not as big as a responsibility. So it's not that bad, but it is something to keep in mind. Like Manny was saying, you know, chameleons can live, you know, like five, seven years. Um, crested gecko, leopard gecko, 15 years. And you know, lychees, 30, whatever, and it goes up from there depending on the type of animal it is. Another thing that is very important to you know take in consideration is the handleability of that animal. Do you want something that you could take out and play with all the time? Maybe like a ball python, a crested gecko, leopard gecko, bearded dragon, even a tegu, they make great you know pets, or do you want something that's a little bit more delicate? Um, but it, you know that you want to set up a really nice vivarium for and you just like to you know watch it in its enclosure like a day gecko uh, you know Europlatus fantasticus which is a satanic leaf tail geckos a bronias um, you know so it, it depends on what you're looking for but in my opinion I think the the coolest animals are the ones you get to interact with so if you want something that before you even start you know like I was saying earlier before you set your hopes or expectations so high make sure you look into the animal make sure that's exactly what you want when it comes to handleability you know if you want to handle something every day maybe an abronia is not the best thing for you or uh, a red-eyed crocodile skink or, or we red get that a lot yeah exactly like the red-eyed crocodile skinks they look so cool but they're always kind of hiding and they're very secretive creatures they don't take stress too well so it's not something that you want to handle so often yeah and if you want something that you can handle a lot the best animals are going to be like bearded dragons those things you could literally take wherever you want yeah. um blue tongue skinks are great for that as well there's something that you can handle every day crested geckos they're not something that's going to seek your attention but they tolerate it very very well especially as you start bonding with it and it starts getting used to you like those new caledonian geckos they're very good with handling as well um something that can be handled more but it does take more work is like chameleons panther chameleons in my opinion are the most handleable chameleons out there does take work though for them to get to that level of trust with you 
Yeah, and, and when Manny says it's the most handleable chameleon out there, it doesn't mean it's like a bearded dragon. Um, it's not something that, you know, you want to take out every single day for an hour a day or something like that. But um, at the same time, it's not very fragile, like maybe like a pygmy chameleon or something, you know? So you gotta, like, like I said, do your research. The most important thing about this video is that it's just to kind of get you guys in the right state of mind where you're not gonna just look for something at a reptile show and buy it, like impulse buy it just because it looks cool and then you get home and it's not what you expected. Make sure you look into the animal that you're looking for and then that's gonna, you know, evade problems later on. Another important factor to take in when you're looking for your pet is the size. How Do you have a lot of space to offer this animal? Do you only have a little bit of space? So that's something very important for, because there's very cool animals like monitors out there and tegus that are incredible animals. They're very smart, very curious, very interactive, but they get huge. Yeah, so and, they sometimes, and sometimes they're even cheap. Yeah. So somebody might see it at a reptile show and think, Like well, a savannah. I'm, yeah, like a savannah monitor. It's a very cheap animal, but that thing's gonna get pretty big. And you're gonna need a very big enclosure. Like for example, our tegus in the back, they're in a six foot by six foot enclosure. If you're living in an apartment, you don't really have the space for that. Yeah. So, so you know, take in consideration the space you have to offer. Right. Like, like, yeah, exactly. Like Manny's saying, if maybe if I'm in a in a in a one bedroom apartment and I, you know, and I don't see myself moving up to a bigger house or anything in the near future, maybe a tegu isn't the best pet for me. Maybe I should hold off on that. So keep that in mind. Um, mo the fortunate thing is that most reptiles, you know, can be kept in like a very moderate size enclosure. Even a, you know, male panther chameleon, which requires a little bit bigger space, can be managed in a single, you know, a small apartment. Um, but something like a water, an Asian water monitor, a savanna monitor, a tegu, these things are going to require a little bit more space and it's not something that you would want to get just because you have the space right now for a baby. You got to keep in mind those things grow pretty quickly and in a couple months it might not be fitting or you might not have the adequate space for it and you might have to give it away and it's just going to cause extra stress to the animal. So one of the last things that uh, you should take in consideration is the type of food that animal eats. There, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like dealing with bugs. So if you don't like dealing with bugs, don't get animals that strictly feed off of bugs like chameleons, abronias, a bunch of other lizards. Or if you don't like dealing with rodents, you know, don't get a ball python that only really eats rodents. Right. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. Like there's some animals out there that are easier, like, like the blue tongue skinks. You can feed them wet dog food and cat food. You know, or some people don't like the smell of cat food and dog food and prefer something else. So, right. you know, keep that in mind. Yeah, and guys, remember, like, there a lot of these animals are omnivorous, so they could eat, you know, like a bearded dragon can eat vegetables and they could eat insects. But that doesn't mean that, oh, I want a bearded dragon, but I don't want to feed it insects, so I'm just going to feed it vegetables. Like, that's not how that works. You don't want to do that because you're going to deprive the animal of its nutrients, of what it needs. So, let's say in that case, you want a bearded dragon, but, you know, you don't really want to deal with insects and you got to look for other options. Another option would be like a Euromastix. Euromastix are very similar to bearded dragons in terms of, you know, the size of the setup, how it's set up, all that. But they only eat vegetables, so that could be an option for somebody that doesn't want to deal with rodents or insects. If you don't mind feeding rodents or insects or you know if you already have some other reptiles and getting another lizard that eats strictly insects insects is not a big deal for you then an abronia is great it's a great choice or you know a leopard gecko if if you want to feed for example or, or it depends on the animals also because a leopard gecko and a African fat tail geckos are very similar but the African fat tail geckos tend to be a little more picky with their food so you're gonna have to give them a little bit more variety than you would with a leopard gecko leopard geckos as easy as it comes you put mealworms in a dish and you can feed them on that for the rest of the of their life if you want and they'll be 100% healthy with a African fat tail gecko, you might be doing that, but the African fat tail gecko is gonna say, you know what, I ain't eating today or next week. So you're gonna have to switch it up. So those are things that you wanna keep in mind. Um, another thing that you wanna keep in mind is uh, if you want a captive bred or uh, if you're gonna get a wild caught animal. Now, we, we sell both. We sell captive bred animals and wild caught animals. All these animals event, I mean, if you go along back 
far enough, they all came from the wild, obviously. So the wild caught animals, not a big deal in my opinion, unless you get an animal that is already pretty rough. The importation process sometimes can be pretty rough on them. So if the animal's already under a lot of stress and doesn't look good to begin with, then you probably want to stay away from that animal. But if the animal looks healthy, if you're if you know what you're looking for, then you could, you know, go for that animal. One of the upside, well, I don't know if it's an upside, but one of the things about wild caught animals is that they're gonna be cheaper than a captive bred animal. A imported satanic leaf tail gecko is not gonna be as much as a captive bred satanic leaf tail gecko because you know it doesn't take as much work to import one versus actually captive breeding one so now the captive bred one might be a little bit hardier or it might it might not have parasites and all these things but you know it's again it comes down to what you're looking for what your budget is and a, a whole bunch of different factors so accessibility to food is also very important if you're like in a rural area where there's no pet shop around and you have a bearded dragon that's eating like a hundred mealworms a week or superworms or crickets and you don't have anywhere to get them you know you got to keep that in mind you're probably gonna have to buy it to get it shipped and that that is very expensive so make sure you keep all that in mind crickets you know all the other types of bugs and um, a good example is like caiman lizards like yeah. a lot of people feed their caiman lizards snails so uh, and most people just like at least around here they go to like the Asian shop or something and they get the snails and they feed it to them um, You could also feed them other things, but you know, that's a big part of their diet So if you're a, at a place that you can't do that, you know, maybe that's not the right pet for you All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give us a like and Make sure you follow us on all of our other social media platforms Facebook snapchat Instagram Twitter we post you know, individual content on every single one of those social media outlets. So if you want to keep up with us and our work and what we're doing, make sure you hit the follow button on all those pages. Thank you guys for your patience. We're going to try again to, you know, have videos every week for you. But if you are a videographer here in South Florida, please hit me up. I'm looking for people to, you know, edit my videos. That way we can put out at least two videos a week. That's my goal. Um, so... Keep me in mind for that. Uh, bear with us, people. We're trying to put as much content as we can, but we also have to run a business and go to reptile shows and prepare for hurricanes. Prepare for hurricanes and all these things. So, thanks for um, you know for watching and having patience.